The Three Stooges are arguably the most popular and influential comedy team in the history of Hollywood, but for every humorous on-screen gag, there was always some kind of dark, twisted story unfolding behind the scenes. Facts First presents The Three Stooges Were Suffering the Whole Time. Hitler put the Stooges on his death list. History's most sinister villain, Adolf Hitler, saw the Stooges' immense popularity in the 1940s as a possible threat to the credibility of the Third Reich. What really got under the Nazi leader's skin was the Stooges' short called You Nazi Spy. This hilarious two-reeler was a ruthless, no-holds-barred critique of the Fuhrer and his fascist regime. The film was released nine months before Charlie Chaplin put out his well-known film, The Great Dictator, earning him a spot on Hitler's death list, too. The film was produced in direct defiance of both the Hayes Code and the prevailing attitude in Hollywood at the time, which was not to rock the boat too much by going after the Nazis. So while many might not think of them as such, the Stooges became courageous anti-fascist crusaders. The Stooges rose to fame during the Great Depression. During some of the darkest years in American history, the Three Stooges rose out of the ashes as the country and world was falling deeper and deeper into despair. The Stooges were somehow able to force a smile onto the faces of their struggling fans with their dim-witted shenanigans. They refused to give up in the face of economic turmoil, and that came to be one of their defining features. A recurring theme in their act was anti-aristocracy and anti-wealth. While audiences were used to seeing depictions of glitz and glamour on screen, the Stooges weren't afraid to mock the wealthy and their highfalutin lifestyles. Their profits were stolen. Joe Dorita, aka Curly Joe, the last surviving stooge, joined the trio in 1958 and remained a member for a decade. On his deathbed in 1993, his share of the stooges' merchandising profits, which he had been receiving continuously for over a quarter century, suddenly dropped. His wife Jean and Larry Fine's granddaughter filed a suit against Moe's daughter and grandson, claiming they had cheated them out of a whopping $5 million. The families got involved in a very public and bitter feud, and Dorita and Fine sought a court injunction to put a freeze on all funds until Moe's heirs could account for the missing profits. And if this story couldn't get any stranger, Bella Lugosi Jr., son of the famous Hollywood vampire, was hired on to represent Dorita and the Fine family. In the end, Moe's grandson and daughter were both found guilty of a breach of contract and ordered to pay Dorita and Fine $2.6 million. Tragedy struck early on. Larry Fine's initial name was Louis Feinberg. He grew up in a working-class Russian-Jewish family in Philadelphia. When he was still a child, his family suffered a tragic loss when his infant brother suddenly passed away. The grief of that incident haunted the Fine family forever. Fine's parents supported their family by operating a jewelry store. On one occasion, Fine was hanging around the store when he spotted something he assumed was a scrumptious beverage. He picked up the bottle and almost started guzzling it down. Saving the day, his father smacked the bottle out of his hands, spilling the liquid onto Larry. Larry's arm. As he quickly discovered, albeit too late, the liquid was actually a poisonous acid used to test jewelry for its gold content. Fine may have gotten a little bit of a chemical burn, but thanks to his father's quick thinking, his life was saved. After burning his forearm with the acid, Fine's parents signed him up for violin lessons in an attempt to rebuild his arm's strength. This musical training is what first sparked Fine's interest in show business. Another close call. Larry wasn't the only stooge to survive a horrible childhood accident. When Jerome Howard, the comic later known as Curly, was 12, his life was almost cut short when he was involved in an accident with a firearm. He was in the process of cleaning the gun when he accidentally caused it to fire. When he looked down, he saw a lot of blood. Fortunately, it only resulted in a flesh wound in the leg and didn't cause serious damage. Even so, it did result in him walking with his signature wobble of a walk, which he later became famous for. Moe's first gig's unexpected ending. As an adolescent, Moe took just about every theater-related job he could find. It didn't matter what he had to do, as long as he got to be close to real live actors, he was happy. Eventually, working odd jobs like running errands for actors finally paid off when a local film company offered him bit parts in their movies. In 1910, while still a teen, the studio Moe worked for suffered a massive fire. All known copies of every film he appeared in during this period in his pre-Stooge acting career got permanently destroyed in the blaze. The Stooges' Unceremonious Exit In December of 1957, the Three Stooges were shocked when they were suddenly fired from Columbia Pictures. Even though they had just spent the last 24 years making low-budget shorts for the studio for essentially chump change, they didn't even have the courtesy to send them off with a fitting farewell, or so much as a thank you. To add insult to injury, a couple weeks later, when Moe arrived at the studio to bid farewell to several studio execs, he was barred entry at the gates. He didn't have that year's studio pass. 
When the Stooges were giving their insulting exit, Columbia Pictures had enough films completed to keep Stooge releases coming for another year and a half. Harry Cohn couldn't have cared less. While he was president and chief of production for Columbia, Harry Cohn transformed the studio into one of the most prominent money-making movie factories in Tinseltown. There's no denying he was enormously talented, but he had a nasty reputation for being combative, unlikable, and vindictive. Even after Curly suffered a string of minor strokes, Cohn reportedly forced him to continue working with no regard for his health or well-being. Not only was Cohn demanding and heartless when it came to expectations of his staff and actors, he was also notorious for being shockingly manipulative. He kept the Stooges underpaid throughout their entire careers. Even when the Stooges' films experienced a sudden surge in popularity after appearing on television, Cohn sat back and collected millions off their hard work while leaving them with next to nothing. Onset Violence Director Julius White seemed to pay the least regard to the health and safety of the Stooges. In his films, he injected heavy amounts of violence and senselessly grotesque gags. Upon his insistence, items like scissors, saws, and mallets were incorporated to heighten the amount of violence in each scene. These selfish and cruel demands frequently resulted in the Stooges' injuries. On numerous occasions, they sustained physical injuries like fractured ribs, broken bones, sprained ankles, and cracked teeth. The Murder of Ted Healy the founder of the Three Stooges, Ted Healy, was arguably one of the most influential comics of the 20s and 30s. He's been described by historians as having a volatile Jekyll and Hyde-like personality, in addition to being a brilliant comic. On the evening of December 20th, 1937, a very drunk Healy hobbled into a Hollywood nightclub called the Trocadero. There, he ran into fellow film star Wallace Beery and New York City mobster Lucky Luciano's top grunt, Pat DeChico. After the three had a rather heated exchange, they made their way to the back parking lot where Healy was beaten savagely. Healy managed to call Shemp up to tell him about what had happened. Not long after, he fell into a coma and died a day later. The police investigation was shut down, leaving many to believe Louis B. Mayer covered up the murder to shield his biggest star, Wallace Beery, from repercussions. Curly's final years were heartbreaking. Curly had the most tragic life of all the Stooges. He was betrayed by virtually everyone he loved and trusted. He also fell heavily into substance abuse to mask his pain. In his final years, he suffered a succession of strokes. These left him paralyzed, depressed, and confined to a wheelchair. When he was 47, his family was unable to care for him and his health was rapidly declining, so he was placed in the care of a nursing home. Due to his mental deterioration, Curly became problematic for the staff. In time, his family was advised they needed to commit him to a psychiatric hospital. Mo refused the physician's suggestions, but nonetheless, his brother ended up getting sent off to the Baldy View Sanitarium in San Gabriel, California. Curly died there, bedridden and utterly alone at age 48 in January of 1952. Now it's time to hear from you. Who was your favorite of the Three Stooges? Let us know in the comments section below.